Oh, that shot doesn't work. Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, hey, everybody. Adam Savage here in my cave with a one-day build that I'm really excited about. I think we all know that I'm a bit of a space nut. Uh, I love uh, my spacesuits. I have over a dozen in my collection. I have built many over the years. Uh, and uh, as I've covered my spacesuit builds on the channel, I frequently mentioned uh, that I collaborate with a wonderful glove maker in Italy named Linda Guaris, like Linda on Etsy. And the most recent pair of gloves she made for me are this amazing version of some Mark IV uh, EMU glove interiors. Um, what all that verbiage means is that this is a, uh, a rough approximation of what is inside a space glove when you see an astronaut doing a spacewalk. And I sent some pictures of a Mark IV that was from eBay, and Linda faithfully and beautifully replicated it here. It's just amazing. And I was thinking about this, and I was thinking, you know, in the real gloves, you can actually see a kind of a green cast to the inside. And that's because the liner, the, the, the airproof bladder liner that's on the inside of a glove is a green color. So I bought some nitrile gloves to make them more accurate for display. And then I got to thinking, you know, if I put a glove in here, if I put a bladder in here, and this is simply a harness for a bladder, which is one way of thinking about the EMU interior here. And Katie Coleman told me that when you go for a fitting, like two guys spend hours like tightening every finger joint just to make sure that the glove is sized to you. And all that's going on on the inside of a glove when you see astronauts doing their spacewalks. Anyway, I was thinking about putting the, 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 the nitrile interior into this. And then I was thinking, wait a minute. I could build something. And, okay, if you want an experience of what it's like to wear a spacesuit, one way to do that is to put on a spacesuit. However, they're really hard to, like, come by. A pressurizable spacesuit is a very rare thing. I've never been able to put one on. Someday I hope to. But, you know, that's not a guarantee. These are expensive pieces of equipment. So very few of us will ever know what it is like to wear a spacesuit. But... If you want an experience of wearing a spacesuit, oh, right, and part of the experience of wearing a spacesuit is that it's pressurized, so that this is this is pressurized. You're working inside a balloon. You are the balloon when you are out on a spacewalk, and that balloon is working against you. If you've ever tried to take a rubber raft from the pool and fold it in half, you know what I mean by working against you. So a pressurizable suit, a very rare commodity. But if you want to know what it's like to wear a glove, well, you could put a glove into a glove box, a negative pressure changer. See, cha pressure chamber, a negative pressure chamber. Um, see, if I want to experience what this glove is like under pressure, I can either pressurize it from the inside or I can depressurize it from the outside. How do I do that? Why, in one of these, my good man, I have found a beautiful thick wall, quarter inch wall acrylic cylinder that is, I think, eight inches in diameter. Yeah, eight inches in diameter. Um, and I'm going to make a negative pressure glove box out of this with this mounted in it so I can pull this to the pressure, to the negative pressure of a suit, which is about three and a half to four pounds per square inch of pressure. For reference, that's about one third of an atmosphere. That is the amount of pressure required to keep the oxygen miles, mole, mole, molecules close enough so that you can actually inhale them and they can do work inside your lungs. But this is, um, yeah, I'm gonna make a little discrete glove box. I've seen these before. Uh, like NASA has actually done stuff like this to look at gloves. So I'm just replicating their, their work here. It's gonna be a fun little glue up. Um, yeah, it's tough to make things airproof and waterproof. It helps when you're pulling negative pressure because it pulls the whole thing together, and that's what I'm counting on here. Um, it's a pretty simple build, construction-wise, materials-wise. Like I said, it's a little exotic. This one piece of acrylic, quarter-inch wall, two feet long, this was like almost 400 bucks. Uh, worth it, totally worth it, but uh, yeah. So I gotta cut this down, which is itself super non-trivial. 
Then I got to make some caps for its ends, which for which I'm going to use some of this half inch acrylic I have here. Uh, I've got some valves for pulling pressure and then sealing it and then relieving it. Yeah, got everything I need. Let's get started, shall we? Now the first step is to cut this guy down. And the first step in cutting it down is to figure out how long it's gonna, what am I doing with this shot? The first step in cutting it down is to figure out how long it wants to be. Uh, so, I don't wanna scratch this. I really don't wanna scratch this. Nice, okay, so let's see here. Fifteen, interesting. Yeah, fifteen inches, I think, would do it. Um, if this is here, actually, even fourteen inches would do it. Yeah, fourteen inches it is. Wait, is that thirteen? Is that what I have there? Christ. That's going to mount up to there. Yeah. 13 and a half inches, okay. Put it back? What a crazy man. Cutting a big acrylic tube like this is non-trivial. Um, you want to do a nice straight cut across. Everything about this glue up requires my um, requires that my surfaces be really, really flat. Uh, none of the glue I'm using is a gap filling glue of any kind. Therefore, I want to be very exacting in my cuts and their squareness because yeah, you'll see. For uh, AI, we had to cut some gigantic uh, acrylic cylinders, tons and tons of them. Um, we actually ended up building a, uh, a set of wheels, four wheels, so that you could cut something and roll it at the same time. See, whenever you wanna cut, whenever you wanna cut something perfectly round, you, you're working against all these specific forces. But, actually, I can set this at 13 and a half. So when you're doing a whole bunch, it, it, having the, the, the dumb wheels that we did at ILM was a really nice solution. As it is, the way I'm gonna do this is, I'm gonna raise up the wheel, uh, and I'm gonna slowly roll this towards it, and then once it's on the wheel, I'm gonna just slowly roll it like this, very, very, very carefully. It's a tricky maneuver. Yeah, all right.
did not like that. So now I have uh, these pieces that are fairly well cut, but if you look really up close, yeah, see that? That's problematic. That's gonna cause me issues. So we're gonna sand it down. I have here some sandpaper and it's this. This is what I'm doing. This is how you smooth it out. That's good enough. That is all that you really need out of a uh, out of a table saw cut. It's just to fix it like that. All right. These things, a large piece of uh, flat board with plywood glued to it, one of the weirdly most important model making tools. I have made so many of these over the years. I've spent so many hours uh, sanding stuff flat on them. It's hard because it requires you to put downward pressure and this pressure, it's not, it's not fun. I'm going to cut these out on the bandsaw, but I'm going to protect them. Can I get both at it? No, I can't. Come on, come on, can you separate? Ah, uh, no.
All right, uh, now it's time to figure out. Uh, so, what I've got is, I've got a tube with two ends, and I can glue that together. However, I wanna cut a hole in one of these ends first, and I also am gonna polish these up and clean them so that they're really nice surfaces. But first, I wanna make a hole, and I wanna figure out how big this hole is. Yeah, it's a hole, it's a, yeah. So, So that's that's it, right? Let's try that. Boink. Ah, nice. All right, uh, I'm gonna make some marks and some notes. First up is I want to figure out what the diameter is of the holes that Linda put around this thing. So. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Huh. Oh, wait, maybe. Maybe. Maybe it's best like this, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now I can see what round looks like. So. I like it. So that's the hole diameter, but they're not perfectly even. Okay, so the ID of this hole is gonna be with some extras over here. Okay. So the question is, I'm just gonna drill these holes as marked. That means they only go together in one way. Let me think about that. Okay, so is this? Yeah, that's very close. Let's see if I can actually fit this over that, because that's an important thing. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm going to make two of those. Okay. 
Okay, so if that is the thing, what holds it together? Cap head, no, oh, no, hand in the Phillips, that's it. <clears throat> Let's say, yeah, it's going to be these 1032s. And great. Great. Okay, so, yep. Great. Yep, I think I understand how I want to do this. And that's going to be the glove. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so, yeah, we're going to cut a hole pattern on the mill with this. Oh, right. And are we, it's all through holes. It's all through holes and bolts. It's not going to be, I'm not going to thread any part of this. That's more work than I want to do. So what I need is a clearance hole for this. Oh, I'm doing Delwin. Okay, okay, okay.
I lose that so fast? How did I lose that thing so fast? Okay. Ooh, hey, hey. So the first step to drilling a hole pattern is to determine your center. Wow. <laughs> I got pretty close. Is that? Where's that? And again. Good. Zero, zero. All right, I want 12 holes. 4.85. 4.85. So, we do bolt hole diameter. 4.85. Enter. Bolt holes. 12. Enter. Bolt hole angle. Zero. Enter. So bolt hole number one. Oh. Is this. Oh, no. Nope. Bolt hole two. Hole two, and we move on. Bolt hole three. Let me just do this all the way through. The machine guides us. In fact, this is a more accurate way to cut holes than a dividing head by a fair bit. nice thing about these bolt holes is that they will line up no matter how I do them, right? The cutting of the ring is less important than the drilling of the hole. Bolt hole five. Here we are. 
Here we are. See that? Came out really nicely. All you got to do is give it a center point, a, a diameter, and the number of holes and where you want to start. And uh, on this lay, on this mill, uh, uh, to the right is zero, and then all the way around, or all the way around. Um, yeah. Now I want to cut this out again on the acrylic. We're going to do a whole new hole pattern. Clear, 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 clear. There we go. I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to find the center and drill a hole pattern. Give or take. That would be it. So that's my center. Doink, doink. And we do function, <coughs> holes, enter, bolt holes, center, yes, enter, yes, enter, enter, diameter, 4.85, 4.85 inches, enter, bolt holes, 12, yes, enter, bolt angle, zero, yes, enter, go, enter, first hole, right there. There we go. 12 holes nicely aligned with each other and a perfect fit for these 12 holes. Now I can hopefully clamp the glove between all of these. Now uh, I'm out of the weld on three. Sorry, no. I have plenty of this stuff, styrene cement, but I want a little bit of gap filling on here. Uh, so I need the thicker, uh, the thicker acrylic glue, often called Weld On 16, is one of the brand names. Tap Plastics is nearby. I'm going to go there and get some. Back in a minute. This is what I was referring to. Um, actually, the young man in Tap was like, as he rang up my credit card, he was like, are you Adam's after Mythbusters? And I said, yeah, it's me. And he goes, hey, I really like watching your YouTube videos. And I was like, I'm making one right now. Boop. Got some fat acrylic number 16. Let us also clean this a little bit, just a little acetone to make sure that there's no residue. Yeah. Whoa! Ah, uh, okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. This stuff <laughs> comes out in a hurry. Wow, it's anxious to do its job. Yep, let's get that away. So I'll have to re-sand that once I, once I get there. I don't need to put a lot of weight on top of it, just a tiny bit. 
the operating pressure of uh, acrylic glue is one PSI. Yeah. Okay, so now, so now I have these guys and I need to cut out the middle first. So I'm just locking these together so that they, uh, now hopefully I can cut these all at once because I want to drill a hole right here and then I'd like to scroll saw through it. So let's get an acrylic bit. These are supposed to be really good scroll saw blades by Olson. These are uh, 12 teeth, 12 teeth, 12 teeth per inch. About a fifth of the way through, this is gonna take a while. About an inch per minute here. One of the reasons I'm going so slowly is because if you go much faster, you can actually be cutting through acrylic and melting it back together at the same time. Seriously. Almost there. There's always a bit of wander. Wow, there's a lot of wander there. All right.
I like that blade a lot. There's often a bunch of wander in a in a scroll saw. Sorry, in a uh, saw like that, the blade tends to move a bit, and I always have a hard time finding that correct balance between how hard to drive it and slow. I I know there are um, you know scroll saw techniques for that. Just. Uh, I feel a little slow about them, that's all. I'm still a little bit iffy on how I'm sealing this uh, neoprene glove in here, frankly. If I drilled these holes by eye, I'd have to maintain which one was at 12 o'clock, but because I didn't, I don't have to. Yeah, I could have made these pieces on the lathe. I could have also laser cut them, but you know, frankly. So now what I'm hoping to do is to thread the glove. This may be a total wash. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Actually, I think I've overdone this. I think I can. sneeze without anyone around. <laughs> Dance like no one's watching. I must say, Linda, I must, uh, I must compliment the precision of your hole drilling, of your hole making in the base of this glove because it really seems to be matching my persuasion here in a way I find very satisfying and correct. Like, 
you did something even, so I was able to make something that fit to it. I may be off by a small fraction, but I think this gets us there. Two to go, dude. Gasket. I'm trying a fairly big gasket. <sighs> All right. So, how do I? Hmm. Could it be that? Oh, right. Look. God, I have no idea if this is gonna work at all. None. I think poking the holes through these is gonna be the undoing of me, but I can't see any other way to go about it.
Woo. Um, Okay, all right, that's working somewhat. Oh, that's the trick. Get rid of the, get rid of the pads. Yeah, smaller footprint and more of a positive grab. Good. Hey, hey, don't you fall. I was trying to use my strength to hold this together and that's why my shoulder started hurting because it's an old shoulder and I can't do that shit anymore. Oh. Okay, I think, I think I've done it. So, let's do a little clean up here. I like it. That looks like a good blue stain. I'm happy with that. All right, so I have to tap some things into here. So here's gonna be the, this is gonna be the glove box, right? That's it, boom. Yeah, so. But first, I need to gauge. But that's fine. That's totally fine. Hey, stop.
almost messed it up. Always at least three wraps. I usually do three and a half. And this guy. And I go back, but then this one. Okay, and now I have a fill port, fill port, and I have a uh, vacuum gauge. That should supply me what I need. So now I think I can pull off that. Ah, right, right, right. I got a little mark there, so I need to take care of that. Now I'm sealing it. I'm going to do this. Doink. Yeah. And then I'm just going to let that sit. Oh, man, I really want to see how this plugs. I'm very excited about this. Okay. So now I'm not going to clean that up. That is a good surface. Yeah. All right. So. Tell you the guys that make the fish tanks, they're amazing. Okay, here we go. You guys or gals that make the fish tanks. Here we go. We are Ripley, we are leaving. There we go. Now let's get a little bit of weight on there, right? Mm -hmm. 
I feel like I got a pretty good seal there. <sighs> Clearly, I need a 16th inch MPT. I was uh, unconvinced I was going to get the green glove to adhere or hold fast. Oh, all right, well, it won't take long now. This will uh, set, and after a couple of hours, I should be able to do a little pressurization test, a little depressurization test, as it were. So while we're waiting for this to dry, I want to address a question you might have, which is, what if it doesn't work? Uh, and that's the distinct possibility that uh, some aspect of the glove outer casing relationship ends up not quite working or being weird, which is, that could happen. Uh, this is all very reconfigurable, right? Because I can still unscrew all of these and pull the glove out. So I still have the chamber and the chamber looks good. It looks like I've got a pretty good, yeah, it looks like I've got a, a seal all the way around. It's still a tiny bit soft. And same thing here. All right, we're gonna go around and we're gonna hit it with a little bit of this just to make sure we are fully sealed. Because I'm pulling a vacuum in this, any pressure, it's pulling the ends in, right? So if there's a hole in the glue, it'll pull this glue into that hole. I must admit I am nervous. Here's the glove box, uh, right? Oh, yeah, right. I can't even put my hand in it because there's pressure in there. All right. Let's see. Um, I've got a vacuum pump here uh, as part of my... Uh, come out. There we go. It's hard to move. <laughs> that looks amazing, and it works amazing. I'm really happy with that. It's not holding its pressure for some reason. The question is why. It holds its it holds itself for a bit. Wow, though it still needs a bit of uh, fine tuning, I think. Oh, whoops. All 
I suppose... Hmm. about as fast, a little slow. A little slower either. Oh God, it feels like a monster film in there. I mean, oh my gosh. What do you want to bet it's in here? That's what I'm going to bet. Okay, now we'll have a little bit of a runner around there, but we'll fix that. Let's see here. I've got to pull this out, and I need a different... I think uh, there's a couple of reasons I'm not getting a seal. I think one of them is because uh, my vacuum gauge was inhibiting my persuasion. But I think the other is that I could do a better... Do a better uh, seal this way. It's a long story. Oh, wow. Am I? I might have messed this up a lot. I'm committed down this path. Yeah. So, let's see what we can do. First up, we can get out that business. Second, we can... Um, Just want to. Okay, don't scratch. Don't scratch. Don't scratch. Yeah. That's, that's what I wanted. Oh, I can work on this like this. Okay, so let's tighten this up significantly. Hmm. 
Okay. is can I get it remounted? Oh, maybe I can. Oh, 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 oh. So what I'm doing on this, because I can't pull any of these rings back out of this, if I'm if I ever do another one of these, I'm doing it so it mounts from this side, not that side. That was unsmart of me. But I'm going to use the nuts to pull it through, and then I'm going to add the washers. Yeah. Yeah, so it looks like it could. So I'll pull it all the way in with the nuts, then I'll remove them one at a time and add the washers and the gasket, the rubber washers. Rubber washers. That's good, tedious work. Oh. It's the kind of work I start thinking about life, you know. It's just like I let my wine wander, you know, and just think about this stuff. And, and then it's like, right, that's like what I remember about the piece, you know. It's like that's what I was thinking about at that moment. And I, I haven't brought out my British art dude in a long time. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I brought him up more recently, but it feels like it's been a while. Am I missing one effing water? I am. Oh, no, I'm not. I screwed up over there. Great. That's why that one squeezed so much. It's not leaking as fast. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. It's feeling inflated. Uh, oh, yeah. Of... No, it's totally bizarro. Because the fingers aren't in the right spots now. You got to kind of fill it a little bit and then... Oh, there we go. It still leaks a little, but much less than before, which is good. So we can turn it on. Adding pressure, not creating a vacuum. No, I am creating. I am creating a vacuum. The vacuum is creating external pressure. Yeah. I don't know if you're gonna. It'll do it like the underwater simulation or space. Um. Dude. Okay. Here, come here. Yeah, I'll turn this off. So it is actually holding pressure now for more than a few seconds. It's sitting at two and a half PSI and it's slowly dropping. So look, that could be down here. It could be up here. Uh, I'd have to take some soapy water to it, but 
Mostly, I just wanted to try my own glove box. And let, let's be clear. Uh, the Phase 4 glove interior is a surpassingly engineered piece of equipment built by ILC Dover to allow the hand of the astronaut to move with the least amount of pressure um, inhibiting them. Not to say that there's no pressure or that it doesn't inhibit them, but it's been engineered, as much of that has been engineered away as possible. I asked Linda Guariz to copy this glove visually. So it is totally unrealistic for me to hope that it would actually also have some functional behaviors that are similar to the original, even though it kind of does just a little bit, it's it's not quite there. Um, but let's, uh, let's, let's pressurize this up. And again, it's negative pressure that I'm putting in here. I am drawing a vacuum and uh, slowly just opening it up, pulling it out to negative five PSI, and yeah. Okay, so it's definitely not leaking from this part. It's probably leaking from the bottom, and okay, yeah, so. There you go. So I keep a constant pressure on you and look at that. It's beautiful. Uh, It's not quite functional. It's not 100% functional, but it is 100% beautiful, and that's good enough for me. Um, I mean, each time I'm pressurizing it, it's falling a little bit slower, so it's also probably the seals are probably working themselves in. You can see inside there. like. And I gotta tell you, when you like move your wrist in this thing, it is non-trivial. See, I don't wanna, oh. See, I want the fingers to go where the fingers should go. That's the trick. Uh, uh, let's do here. <laughs> Hang on. I'm not willing to wrap it out just yet. Ooh, 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 that was a lot. Ladies and germs, the glove box of my dreams. I just, I've always wanted this piece of equipment and now I have it. Um, there may be further experimentation with more uh, realistic glove interiors, but I'm gonna have to find some collaborators for that because I am not up for the sewing required for this level of engineering. It is totally amazing. Katie Coleman was telling me that when Maybe I already said this earlier in this video, but like when you're having a glove fitting, it's like two people just sit there like tightening every little string on every little knuckle ow, until it fits. Um, thank you guys for joining me for this one day build. I love this sculpture. Um, yeah, there may be more of this in the future. Hey, look, we can wave goodbye. See you next time. Bye everybody.